This is the danger, the danger. Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to the Dean Show. In the studio, Dr. Hatim, and we're going to be giving some advice how to make sure your children don't go astray. What do you do when you have so much influence trying to influence them to doing bad? But they should be doing good. How do you keep them doing good? Because the Creator, He gave them to you in original goodness, not an original sin. Every child is born pure. How do you keep them pure? And that's what we're going to be answering here on the Dean Show with our guests when we come back. Stay tuned. Dean, Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Salam alaikum, Shaykh. Salam alaikum, Salam. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining us here on the Dean Show. Thank you for inviting me. That is the question. Now people can go to the deanshow.com and they can read a little bit more about you. You're a medical doctor, PhD. You've spent so many years studying the way of life that was revealed to all the messengers of God including the last and final messenger of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all the messengers that preceded him. Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, just to name a few. Islam. So now we want to know, the million dollar question is, how do you keep the children from going astray? You see them joining gangs. You see them being promiscuous. You see them doing all sorts of mischief out there emulating the hip-hop stars, the actors and actresses. What do we do? How do we safeguard them from following an evil path and keep them on a righteous path? Let's start with this, please. Uh, you were right about saying that this is the one million dollar question because it's, it's such a big question and the answer, uh, if, we, if we try to be brief, I think the answer would have to be... Uh, Rely on Allah, rely on God, uh, because he is, he is the one who can help you. Uh, no one else can help you, even you cannot help yourself if Allah does not help you. Uh, start early is, is the uh, other advice that is, that is very crucial here. Uh, and uh, I would say that it, it does not start from the day the child is born. It starts from the uh, day you, you, you choose your, your partner who will be the mother or the father of that child. Uh, so I think starting early is important. I think that you need to have a vision for this unit, which is called the family. That is you know, one of the building blocks of the Muslim society, the family. So when you start this corporation, uh, you, you want to have a vision for this corporation and the corporation also should have a mission and the mission should be in agreement with the mission of the society, the mission of the Ummah uh, because it is one piece, one unit in, that, in, the, in the whole uh, building. Uh, so I think that you have to be clear on what is it that you want of this life. Uh, are, are, we're getting married. We have to agree that this marriage is to help both of us uh, serve our mission in this life, which is to worship Allah and to be in conformity with uh, the way of Allah. And uh, the Ummah collectively, by the way, has a mission not only to worship Allah and be in conformity with the way of Allah, but the Ummah collectively has a mission to change the world, to be in, in conformity with the way of Allah uh, out, of, out of mercy, out of keenness to... to, to, to uh, to deliver this good to everyone because every human being is deserving of this good. Every human being is deserving of being connected with the Lord who created them. They will never find happiness otherwise. So when you reach out and you do this, you're actually being quite merciful and you're being quite kind to, to all humanity. So you have to have a vision when you start a family. Uh, and you have to have the knowledge of how to have a family and how to uh, be a good husband and how to be a good parent, a mother or father. 
uh, in what is the what what are the Islamic principles of r raising a child or even an adult uh, that are based on, uh, for instance, moderation. Uh, because sometimes people have uh, extreme expectations. Uh, so unless your, your vision is based on, or your principles of raising the child uh, are based on moderation, based on the centricity of, which, which should have come first, the centricity of uh, our relationship with God. You know, as human beings, uh, Islam provides us a holistic, uh, therapy for our hearts, our minds, our souls, for everything. And all of this is dependent on our relationship with Allah. Uh, that is the most important relationship that we have to correct, we have to rectify, so that we can uh, be together. Our mind and heart and, and s spirit, all of them can be uh, aligned together and aligned with the will of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine creator. And uh, then you will have to understand also the reality, the, the reality that you're dealing with. You have to understand the, the, what is it that you're aspiring to and you have to understand the child, the reality of uh, the child, the child himself and the circumstances that surround the child. Uh, the child himself goes through stages. You have to really have some knowledge of the various stages and how to tackle each stage. For, the, for instance, for the first one or two years of life, uh, this is a stage of building trust, trust versus mistrust. The child is building trust with the parents? Absolutely. Yeah. The child wants, you know, the child wants to know if the caretaker, you know, the, the, the main caretaker is actually a good caretaker or not. And if the caretaker is a good caretaker, the child will start to develop trust. This is the psychology, yeah, absolutely. psychology of the child? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so if the child is, is crying because they are hungry or because, of the, uh, you know, because of some other legitimate reason and you do not respond to this, uh, the child will start to develop mistrust. But what, but, but, but what about not 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 to, uh, you know because in this program we're going to just hit some. You've also you you run an uh, Islamic academy and you've written some books. So in this show we want to just give some highlights and then really get people because we can talk. This is a, this we can talk about this for <laughs> days. Now this is interesting point because every uh, um, parent knows how the child will react. They'll from those years they'll throw tantrums. They'll be crying. So. What do you do? Do you just ignore it, this, or some will also turn to the timeout method? Is this good, or what do you do when they're when they're crying like this? And you'll tell them no, and they'll just start breaking down for you know just for you maybe amplifying your voice a little bit. So do you tone it down? What do you do in these situations when you have to discipline them because they're reaching for something that might hurt them? They might do something that caused them harm. How do you handle these situations? Well, it depends on the age of the child. You know, early on, if the child is a little infant, you want to make sure that the child is not hungry, the child is not uh, cold, the child is not, you know, wet or dirty. So or that's one year older. That. Yeah, or and then yeah, and then thereafter, when the child is throwing tantrums, you want to make sure that the child is not in pain, because you know the child could be simply in pain, ah, okay. and this is the, how they express their pain. If the child, for instance, has an ear infection, yes, and they they have pain, they'll be fussy. Fussy. You know, well, if they are fussy, you want to really not always blame it on misbehavior, but maybe there is there is a cause behind. So it. checking for pain. How, how do you check if you're not a doctor? You got to get them to the doctor right away. If they're, what are the symptoms? Well, Since you're a doctor, also you're a pediatrician. Uh, well, if there is there, if there are manifestations of being sick, you know, a little bit of fever, a decreased appetite, uh, you know, fussiness is one of it. Uh, but you'll also have some other issues. Some, someone may be pulling on the ears. Someone will be maybe having cold they'll, they'll symptoms. Be, they'll, they'll be pulling on their ear. Yeah, tugging, pulling. Uh, okay. Yeah. So there will be some hint or indication. But if it is uh, basically misbehavior, then you want to also not counter this by misbehavior uh, from your end. Okay. Okay. Let's hold on there. You saw the t tugging on the ear. You could do some tugging on the ear. Listen to this because we get some good advice from the mm -hmm. Sheikh. We'll be right back on the Dean Show. He is born about 60 years ago in former Yugoslavia, today is Bosnia. After Second World War, can you imagine today you have one child killed too much? It's important that we realize that Islam is a gift. So we believe that in the teachings of Jesus, what is left, there is truth in it.
But the truth has been mixed up with paganism and with nature worship. And so Islam has given you a pure, straightforward way of approaching monotheism. Back here with Dr. Hatim Sheikh, we're talking about, and you're also a pediatrician, you're also an MD, you're a doctor, you do, you do what you specialize in, we're not talking to a car mechanic. So now, okay, so we got past, okay, the, the first few years, or the first, what is it, until about two or one and a half, where you want to make sure they're fed, take care of them, show them mercy, and always showing them mercy, obviously, but now those years, what do they call them, the terrible twos? Have you heard that mm -hmm. before? Mm -hmm. The terrible twos, three, where some parents are going out of their mind. The kids are jumping, biting, you know, screaming, r jumping on here, there, everywhere, and they can hurt themselves, throwing tantrums, crying. How do you deal with this? Well, the, the, oh, the, oh, and before we went on, on break, you said don't, uh, so I, I can remind you, you said don't uh, counter it with uh, bad behavior yourself. Yeah, yeah. Because if you if you start to curse and if you start to uh, you know to, to to beat the child, for instance, for for some of those reasons, I think that this is uh, misbehavior. Don't do that on your part. Certainly, this is a two-year-old. This is a three-year-old. Now you need to try to to figure out what's happening. And even if there is misbehavior on the part of the child, uh, you have to understand that. Particularly now we're talking about you know two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this 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 stage in the child's life is is a very crucial stage, a very important stage from various aspects. Uh, this is the stage of autonomy, the stage of initiative. Uh, the child wants to be autonomous. The child wants to set uh, her, his or her limits. Uh, so we, he will push to see you know his limits, his his impact on the world, his, uh, <laughs> the child his, is really, his influence, like, absolutely. He wants to see how, how much he can push you, how far he, he can. Absolutely. Because we see this as parents, this is for real. And, and part of this stage is to be egocentric, uh -huh. and this is not abnormal for this stage. Yeah. So you to be selfish, to not share toys, and to, to do all of this, that's just part of the stage. Because in this stage, they want to test their limits, they want to see how far they can go, how much control they have over the, the world around them. Shay, just a side note, because you said now they're selfish, they're trying to, you know, uh, not share this, that, and the other. Some people might argue that this is because of that original sin. That's how it's in their nature. Just to go on a side note, how would we answer this? Because I've gotten this argument from people. What do, you, what do we have to say about this? Well, uh, For the not yet Muslims who are listening. Yeah, well... Uh, would, would, would it make sense to say that, uh, I heard this from Sheikh Yusuf Estes and yeah. I liked it very much. Uh -huh. he, he was saying that it wouldn't make any sense to say to a judge, my, you know, uh, my client is as guilty as a newborn child. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, it is natural for a human being to think of a newborn child as innocent. Yes, yes. Uh, yet, uh, God would not actually make us accountable for a sin that we, we've never witnessed, we we're not part of uh, by any means, so this is not fairness or justice. However, God created the human being with various inclinations, and some of those inclinations are good inclinations, and some of those inclinations are bad inclinations. Now, he did not force any bad inclinations on us, mm -hmm. but Within our makeup, there is the good inclination and there is the bad inclination. We've shown him the two ways. Uh, and part of our makeup also is that you can go right and you can go left. Well, the child uh, is, is not necessarily trying to be wicked or evil, but is trying to see how much control he has. How, would, how else would he know how much control he has? Uh, you know, when when you start a new job, don't people tell you usually, you know, this is you can do this, you cannot do that. Yeah. And well, he is here in this world, and he's seen a lot of people around him, and he's interacting uh, with them, and he wants to know, you know, this is father, this is mother, those are my siblings, those are people who come every once in a while to our home. You know, everybody has, seems to have, there are certain dynamics here and everybody seems to have different roles. Where is my role? What's my role? And what are my limits? So he wants to test them. Uh, so that is when you set limits, 
because you will not allow the child to hurt himself or hurt others. You've got to set limits. Absolutely. There's got to be some disciplining because you're not going to allow the child to be a tyrant, to grow up a tyrant. And sometimes people can do this by spoiling the child, by making them... Keep in mind that the children have a, a, you know, one of the interesting phenomena in, in this particular age group is a phenomenon called uh, animism and another one called artificialism. Artificialism is when you feel everything is artificial, everything is man-made. And animism is when you feel that even the inanimate objects, you know, the table, can talk to you and can be under your control and the clouds and the buildings and so on and so forth. So the, the, those two different phenomena are part of the uh, psychological growing of, of the child. So he, he feels that he can be in control of everything. Uh, and that is not bad if you use it well. If you use it well. If you give him room uh, to take, the, uh, to take an, uh, you know, initiative. If you give him room to show his leadership. But to set limits so that he knows that he's not here alone. And he knows that, yes, you can, far as far, you can go as far as you want, uh, but without compromising other people's rights. There are people who live with you also in this universe, and you do not want to overstep the limit between you and them. So if you do this carefully, but you give the child enough room to breathe, enough room to feel uh, that they have a separate identity, yeah. that there is some level of autonomy, give them a chance to, to choose you know, their attire. Uh, sometimes they, they may have like a very bad choice and then you... you Give us a fact to how do you, how do, you do that? So, are we talk so the parents can get a better uh, idea. What age are we at now between? Uh, we're, we're now, we're, we're from two onward. Two uh, onward. Two, two to so, seven. So you're talking to them and you, and you would give us a practical example. Say, you know, w would you like to wear today? And you, you can do yeah. that? Well, if... Yeah, absolutely. What, what, you know, even with food, you ask everybody, w would you like to eat some more of that? So even food? as a child? Yeah, what, absolutely. Okay. You want to be doing this. Makes you sense. want to make them feel that uh, you do not control everything. Ah. There is not absolute dictatorship here. Oh, nice. Okay. But there are limits. I'm still a parent. Don't lose that, you know, uh, control. So, I, so even if, if they don't understand you, they'll catch on. They'll absolutely catch on, and they will, they, they, they will know where their limits are, and they will know that, yes, you may have the final, word, the final word about things, but that's just the nature of life, not only between the parent and the child, but even in the society. There has got to be some hierarchy. You know, af after all, someone will have to make the decision, the president in a country or the chairman of a department or, you know, the CEO of a company. So, uh, there is a hierarchy. Someone will have to make the decision. So are you always goo goo gaga or are you talking to them like an adult? Uh, you, probably do no, you probably don't want to be talking to them like, uh, like a child because they want to feel respect. Oh, yeah. You know, they want to feel respect. The tone may be a little bit different, may be a little more kind and merciful, uh, but you, you do not want to... Uh, have a, like a, a, a speech for adults and speech for children. You want to speak to them like adults with a different tone, but certainly you will understand the limitations of their logic because, you know, between two to seven, they may not be uh, operational yet, you know, uh, in terms of their thinking. And it, it may take them up to 10 or 11 years to have abstract operational uh, thinking. What, what do you think about timeouts? You heard about the timeout method? When the child is now, you know, going up in the cupboards, breaking the glass, they didn't cut themselves. What do you do? Some parents just let, oh, let them, give them room, just go, or sit them down, time out. Have you heard of this method? Is yeah, this, this time, out is time out is a, a legitimate method because uh, as much as you can avoid uh, physical punishment, everything that can make you avoid physical punishment would be a good idea. In fact, the first thing that you need to do is to actually show them what is right. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes you get upset with them uh, before showing them, you know, what is right. Uh, we get upset when they do the, uh, something wrong. Uh, well, when, when uh, the Prophet ﷺ was sitting with Amr ibn Salama, uh, and he was, you know, his hand was going all over the, the dish. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, O oh, young boy, say Bismillah, eat with your right hand, 
and eat from the other side that's next to you. So he did not reprimand him. He did not tell him this is wrong. This is called positive reinforcement uh -huh. versus negative reinforcement. Before you tell him what, what, what are you doing? What's this mess? Tell him what is right. He said to him, Ya Ghulam, which is, you know, an endearing word, you know, old young boy, Sammillah, say Bismillah, could be a meaning, eat with your right hand and eat from the side that's next to you. Teach them what's right first. Try to enforce uh, and reinforce good habits before you do the negative reinforcement. Teach them what's right. Enforce the good habits before you go ahead and reprimand. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back here on the Dean Show. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. What the problem here is, yeah. is this, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshipping? Yeah, because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshipped. God. We're back here with Dr. Hatim and we're trying to answer the million dollar question, how do you make sure your kids don't go astray? And we're starting off from the beginning because once the ship sails, <laughs> bye bye, it's very difficult, isn't it? Yeah. So we're giving the audience some advice from early, young age, how to deal with the children. Okay, so we talked about the timeout method. You gave an example from the Sunnah of the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Tell us now, give us some more practical, let's paint a picture, you know, the child is doing something bad. And then how would you go about talking to him and correcting him? And if you do a timeout, how long do you do it for? A minute, two minutes? And give us some, some examples, please. Uh, First of all, you have to ask yourself, did I teach him to do it right? And if I taught him to do it right, uh, did I remind him enough? Uh, because a child that is two years old may not remember that I told him last month, uh, don't do this or don't do that. You, you need to really repeat it several times. Mm -hmm. And then thereafter, you, you want to be trying to deter the child if the child has been taught and several times you, you try to deter the child. This is the stage of negative reinforcement or various mod modalities of punishment. And it, it starts with some uh, emotional punishment. Very, very basically to turn your face away, uh, meaning that you're upset. And whenever something can be corrected by just simple measures, you know, big measures or enormous measures are to be avoided to be completely. That's just what logic dictates. And that's the way of the Prophet Sallallahu and, and teaching us all things. So, so start with simple measures and then try to escalate. Uh, withdraw the privileges also would be a good idea. To withdraw privileges would be a good idea. Maybe that is not understood. Time out is actually a withdrawal of privilege. The privilege of being able to go anywhere yeah, yeah. is restricted. Uh, later on, you know, for, for an older child to withdraw some other privilege is something that he cares about and you say, you know, you're not going to do this. Take it away. Uh, because take it away because, because you have done this. That's negative reinforcement. And negative reinforcement continues also uh, to, escal to escalate based on the the, the uh, what we call in Arabic al-jurm al-jurm. Al-jurm is the crime and al-jurm is the uh, the size of the child, yeah. you know, because uh, you have to understand, or the, 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 the age of the child and the size. Uh, so oftentimes you have to identify the size of the crime, you know, because if you, if you, if you punish the child for uh, spilling milk on the carpet, for instance, well, does that need punishment? Unless there has been something, something intentional about it, 
uh, no, there should be no punishment whatsoever. That would be ta taking revenge. That is not disciplining here because you're, you're so hurt by, you know, expensive carpet is now this or that. Uh, so you're taking revenge for yourself. You're not disciplining your child. And it is, it's certainly it's, uh, very unbefitting of any Muslim to do this, to take revenge against a child uh, be, because of something that is not really a sin. It's just a mistake. So you have to look at the, what they did and you have to put it in the right perspective. So abandoning their prayers may be worse than much of what they do, uh, but, but many parents look at it from their own perspective, their own interest, uh, not from the interest of the child and the well-being of the child, spiritual and emotional, and every, from, and, and from every aspect. So you want to look at the crime and you want to look at the age of the child. Time out if you're three uh, years old, maybe three minutes will be okay. Uh, and, and then you, you add a minute for, for every year because their attention span is limited. We're going to direct people. I heard you wrote a paper on this or a book. Where can people go? And we want to do a part two to this. You think you can Don't you, do that? I would be glad to do that. Great. God willing. God willing. So tell us now, where can people go to increase their knowledge on this topic and in Islam in general? Tell us in this last minute that we have. Uh, well, they can go to my website, and that's drhatimalhaj.com, D-R-H-A-T-M, alhaj.com. And the, there will be uh, several articles on this. Uh, they can go also to Amja Online. Uh, in fact, they're better off going to Amja Online because they will find some other articles by other uh, good uh, scholars. Uh, it's amja, A-M-J-A, online.org. Um, and then they, they can continue the, their education. I think that every Muslim needs to continue uh, uh, his or her education, not only to, to tackle a particular problem, but just to get the big picture. Because it is important that you, you're not using Islam to tackle a particular problem and then you forget about Islam once it's done or, you know, no, y you want to really accept the religion in entirety. Uh, and don't be afraid to, to, to do that. Don't be afraid to surrender and to accept it. So I think that uh, getting to know more will bring you closer to Allah. More recognition will mean always more love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the more you recognize his greatness, his wisdom, his kindness, his mercy, the more you will love him. So don't be afraid uh, of knowledge. And they can also go to, what, where is this place that they can go? For Continuing education uh, Well, I'm, I'm the Dean of Sharia Academy. They can go there can also? Go to www.shariaacademy.com. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. May thank God Almighty nice. love reward you. Thank you. We look forward to having you, you back here again on The Dean Show. Thank and thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. What do you have? you got to believe and do good deeds. And when you die, what do you leave behind? If you leave behind a righteous child, then you're going to still keep them deeds coming in. You're still going to be getting rewarded for that. But if your child goes astray, there goes your investment. So you've got to put in the time. Put in the time now so you can benefit later. And we are here trying to help you develop that better understanding through doing it God's way, doing it Allah's way, sticking to the game plan. That game plan is Islam. Sticking by the Quran, the verbatim word of God, and the authentic Tradition, sayings, actions of the last and final message of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his hadith. So continue to come back here every week to the Dean Show. We'll have more exciting shows on this topic and others. And we'll see you next time. Peace be unto you.